Hi. I hope you're doing well in these crazy times. Are you earning a living differently these days? I know I am. I work from home now from inside my wardrobe here. Which is why it was great to produce three audiobooks about just that. A bloke who calls himself Harry Singh, that's actually his granddad's name, his pen name is Harry Singh, is an author. I call, he's, his name's Prem, so I call him Prem. And he's done three books that I've produced up now as audiobooks. One about remotely working, one about remote working for managers and it, managing people who work remotely. And if you are not managing someone, I bet you're having to interact on Zoom calls or whatever if you're working remotely. And the third book covers everything. It's called Cabin Fever, How to Stay Sane. They're great audio books. And I had a chat with him. I spoke to him when the first one came out. I thought we'd have a nice follow-up and talk about how the, the trilogy, how all three of them are out, because it really is an important time to work out how to work remotely and spend so much time on your own without interaction in person. With There's so many issues. And this is a guy that cares very much about it. And they are great books. I, you know, I read them, and it was an honor to be chosen as the narrator and producer for these three audio books. And keep watching, because at the end of our chat, we'll show you how you can get uh, the audio books for free. And also, if you prefer an e-book, how you can get all three for three pounds. So this is my chat with Prem. His pen name is Harry Singh. And it's all about working remotely and avoiding cabin fever. The books are by Harry Singh. There are three of them. And they are Effective Remote Working Techniques for Coders. They are Effective Remote Working Techniques for Managers. And Cabin Fever, How to Stay Sane While Working Remotely. Now, you and I had a chat when the first book came out. But I'd like to take the three of them as a whole because they're so connected. They're all about the same thing. Why Absolutely. did you write these books? Uh, so the, the, I want to take a different slant with each of them. Um, so the, you know, the first two are pretty much self-explanatory tips uh, and techniques which are aimed for coders and managers and parts of those don't apply to the other. So it made sense to create a third one. Um, sorry, create individual ones for those two. But the third one, Cabin Fever, is a more generic one. And it's it's less focused on um, the, the remote working side, but the, the mental health impacts that will affect everybody. Yeah. That can affect everybody. Um, and a much wider gamut of people. Um, so that, that was more a generic... Uh, almost like rather than going down a how to be more productive route, it's yeah. more a how to look after yourself in a kind of a self-help angle on it and figuring that you'd, you'd get the two two of them together. So if you're a coder, you'd get the how to be productive as a coder plus how to look after your mental health, and that would make a, an excellent package together uh, to make a complete set to... I mentioned it to you in the last chat that the timing of this is actually spot on. First of all, for the world, with so many people, you know, locked down, but personally for me too, because I had to quickly make the change from working in, in radio stations to working in my wardrobe. And the, um, the first book, you know, although it was aimed at coders, I found so much of it in there relevant to my new life and then the second book expanded on it a little because it was you know it was dealing with it was how to deal with people remotely and in yeah. what i'm doing now which is working with authors like yourself to yeah. transfer their their written books into audio books i'm working with them remotely and communicating with them and getting feedback and adjusting and whatever so although i wasn't managing them it, they were more managing me but it was about yeah was about having a, a working relationship at distance That's exactly, yeah. and then yeah. thirdly the cabin fever one was just the icing on the cake and it's it's the perfect trilogy because you know i'm here alone all day and you yeah. do 
go a little crazy. I mean, I've noticed I talk to myself now, <laughs> which is something I never used to do. Um, um, uh, but uh, but they are they are great books and they work together as the three. So if anybody who's thinking of getting one, I would say get all three, download all three because even though the first one says for coders and even though the second one says for managers, there is stuff that is super relevant if your life now involves being cabined up for okay. want of a better expression yeah. and and earning your living by not leaving the house. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, just how to manage being holed up and. I say the isolation, it's, it creeps up on you and you don't realize it until it's almost too much to handle. And that's when it sort of becomes really apparent to you as a person on your own. Uh, ah, I've got to deal with this. But then at that point, you're, you're so deep into it, you almost don't know how or how to start or what's the first thing that you should try and unravel, to try and get yourself out of this rut or uh, this this. The, the depths of the isolation that you, you can be feeling at the time yeah what what i what i really like one of the many things i really like that it's covered in all three books is about it's about boundaries with time because now that there isn't a clear start time and finish time you can and i've been very guilty of this of getting just uh you're, you're you're never at home you're at work now all the time it's not because you first think when you go to work remotely or you first think great i'm going to be home all the time no the bigger risk is you're going to be at work all the time and you're never <laughs> going to be at home yeah That's it. Yeah. yeah so did you i mean you myself. you are an expert at this because you how long have you been working remotely then uh remotely well over a decade well over 10 years yeah so it's obviously there were different levels of remote working. I've had contracts where it's a day a week. So your standard is your Friday. You know, people are quite happy, or usually companies are quite happy with uh, some members of staff working uh, Friday from home as a, you know, letting you sort of roll into the weekend, kind of get that feeling. Um, others are have been much more open to it and let me work nine days out of ten and only have to go down to london for one day every fortnight when the entire team got together every two weeks um and there's been various various ranges in between um so yeah uh, it's always it's an entirely adaptable situation for me uh, i'm constantly changing the people i work for um sometimes i have multiple people at the same time i'm working for so i have to Bounce, bounce between two sites and two clients and two projects at the same time um, and, and that makes it, those days at home even more difficult because uh, sometimes the clients don't realize which one I'm actually working for on what days and, <laughs> and I have to bounce in that headspace um, while being at home and not having that, that clear delineation between um, the, the two projects with, yeah, can, that's when it really sort of piles up really quickly um, in your head and gives you that, uh, yeah, that, that that sense of I can't deal with this anymore. So and while that, you were trying the, the regimented aspect, while you in. were trying to deal with the challenges of the working remotely, did you find yourself suffering from the cabin fever as well, which is what's in the third book? Yeah. And Very what much what so. what Very what so. kind of what symptoms of cabin fever did did you exhibit? Um, so you'll notice I'll press my arm straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so, just where I don't want to be. <laughs> uh, so let's do that. Okay. Um, yeah, it was, it was just that sort of groundhog day feeling, I think. Um, so I was, I was there for about three weeks. I, I think it was the beginning of burnout as well. I started, I, I had, so at the beginning, uh, over 10 years ago, I had a proper burnout where I had to take uh, a week off and I just said to my wife, I'm, I'm going on holiday. I need, I need a break from, and um, I just about made it to the plane. I just about got off the plane and then I slept for about 36 hours in the hotel. <laughs> got in, checked in, just dropped my stuff and just collapsed on the bed. And the next thing I know, it was the next afternoon. Yeah. Um, 
and then I took that holiday just very, very slowly. Um, hardly made out of the hotel room, hardly ate, <clears throat> excuse me. And yeah, just, and that's when I realized that was burnout, complete, proper, hardcore burnout. And I, it was at that point I promised myself I would never let that happen to me again. And, I, and coming out the other side of it, I recognized what had happened in the two or three months prior that had led me to fall into that state in that week. And yeah, like I say, I just promised myself, never is that going to happen to me again. And that's when I started putting in certain measures in and figuring out what measures I could put in to make sure that never happened again. I guess that was really the start of the journey, but it wasn't ever really formalized. Um, and again, various levels of remote working meant that I could get away with not using certain techniques and they'd almost get forgotten. And then when, uh, what, what kind of techniques uh, are we talking about? Um, so the, the be, being regimented with your time, being regimented with time. If I was only doing a day a week at home, then I could almost start you know, slacking off at two in the afternoon. As long as I got a good, decent amount of work in, in the beginning of the, uh, in, in the morning, um, then I could you know, take that long lunch. Um, but then as I started that relaxing, taking that long lunch, I realized that long lunch actually has benefits to it as well. I know, because one of the things that surprised got, me in the, yeah. was it the first book or the second book, you recommended an, an, a 90 minute lunch. 90 minute lunch when you're at home yeah, yeah. right and uh, again part of that is fueled by the time you save from not commuting so all you're doing is taking some of that time that you save and using it more effectively uh, to your own benefit rather than your work's benefit um, and at the end of the day if, if you're not benefiting yourself then your work's going to be uh, going to go down and stand as well so looking after yourself has to be the primary primary concern every time mm. uh, and just taking that extra half an hour uh, just to you know, whether you uh, cook yourself a decent lunch or go out and get yourself a decent lunch um, just use it, utilizing that time wisely uh, and just take and that little bit of rejuvenation every day just as that little bit of extra work every day adds up and you don't realize it the same in reverse if you look after yourself that little bit every day that builds up and builds up and builds up without you realizing it. And then you just maintain that higher level of well-being. Um, again, without putting too much effort in, to a like, conscious effort. Um, and again, without actually realizing the, the benefit that you're having, because you just feel a normal level of good all the time, as opposed to a normal level of tired all the time. <laughs> Yeah, so that helps with two things. It helps with productivity and it helps with staving off cabin fever. Yeah, and it also helps when you switch off as well that you know your, your personal relationships or the time you spend outside of the work hours will help you be more productive, if you'd like, yeah. uh, for a better choice of a word, in that those hours as well. So yeah. it will boost your, your relationships. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's a sort of snowball effect. It can be positive or negative, depends on how, uh, how where you put your efforts in. Now, the subtitle of the first book, the first book, of course, is um, Effective Remote Working Techniques for Coders. And I say it doesn't apply just to coders. It applies to anybody working from home. But the subtitle is Nine Practical Steps to Boost Your Productivity When Working wherever and I, I keep I keep making the mistake that's really early on in the book it, it actually in the first book it says remote working doesn't necessarily mean working from home but from in my case it, it does and so that's why I've I've gravitated to this so sorry about that but it's nine practical steps of the nine steps which one is the most important Now, I said diet in our last conversation. You did. Uh, and diet is essential, and it is one that yeah. I still 
have to get right. For me to get diet right, just like it said in your book, <laughs> I have fat because I'm a work in progress. I'm not. I'm not saying yeah. I've nailed this working from home by any I means. I'm still a work in progress. <laughs> okay, but but for me, like you say in your book, it's a, it starts really at the supermarket. It's about what's yeah. in the cupboard. If bad stuff's in the cupboard, I go there. I okay, don't right. like to. Well, the last three days I've made the mistake. Actually, I made the mistake. The other day, after we'd had our tea, I said, because we've got a convenience store next door, I said, should I go to the Stop and Rob, as I call it, should I go to the Stop and Rob and get us a bar of chocolate? And instead of getting us a bar of chocolate, I got five bars of chocolate. And so we had one between us and one of the other ones. I had the whole bar yesterday at lunchtime. It does actually start. By, by making sure that what's in the cupboard is healthy stuff. Because if there's healthy yeah. stuff in the fridge or the cupboard, that's where you're going to go. Yeah, you did, if, if you you did say choice. diet yesterday. Hey? If, you, if you've got a choice, you know what choice you're going to make, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, so it's you, really hard to make a good choice if you've got a bad choice in front of you. Do you still stick by diet as, the, as, as number one? Um, I don't, actually, I don't think I, I mean, phrased yeah. the question that way to you last time. I don't think I said of the nine, which is the most important. I think I said, could you just give me one that, that's important or something? But of the of the nine techniques that you've got in there, the practical steps, which one which one would you say is the most important? So yeah, the diet is the most important. But to pull another one in, uh, having uh, especially if you're like most of, a lot of us are now five days a week at home, yeah, um, work working from home or working not from an office, um, then having that regimented uh, time structure. Um, sorry, the structure around your day. Yeah, that would probably be the, be the most effective for the most number of people. Uh, having your your fixed end time. Yeah, the yeah. fixed boundary between the end of work and the start of your home life. Um, trying to get a regular slot in your week, a particular morning, a particular afternoon, a particular whole day, where you work somewhere else, whether it be a library or your local cafe or somebody else's house some yeah. share um, just so you have that change of scenery and again have it fixed so I mean that, again if you have it at, at somebody else's house and you use using their facilities uh, then you know, that gives them that little bit of regimentation in their life as well and that could then sp <clears throat> excuse me spread uh, into into their week they yeah. might find, oh, you know, they really look forward to having that particular afternoon with somebody else, a familiar face. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and having that thing to look forward to, they might start adding other things into their week. Uh, and then you can drop the book to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What I've found has, has helped me, and, and I don't know whether you want to put this in a further book or whether it's covered in one of them, I don't know. but Because I know you mentioned you know, Zoom meetings and stuff as a work thing. Yeah. But yeah. I I make sure that I have chats like this with your, people like yourself, with authors I've worked with, because it helps, it, it helps promote the books. But I end up having someone interesting to talk to that day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm lucky yeah, enough. Yeah, to look to, yeah. yeah, and I do a show on podcast radio uh, where I once a week. From here, though, it's all recorded here. And it, it's it's about the top 20 podcasts. And I get to talk to podcasters in this same way and then okay. use the audio for on the radio. But it means at least two or three times a week, I do spend some time talking to interesting people. And I think as far as the cabin fever goes, that has helped me enormously. I Thanks think I really podcast. would be climbing the walls if it wasn't for that. Yeah. <laughs> You've just got yeah. to have human connection of, of some kind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's get into um, the the cabin fever thing then. Of if if the, the well, I suppose they're all linked, aren't they? The 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 remote working, the managing people, and everything in cabin fever. There really are blurred lines between the three. You really need to get all yeah. three books. Yeah. Uh, the thing with the manager's book um, going on that is, as well as having to look after yourself. And have and try and get that social aspect into your own life as well to prevent the isolation. You also have a number of people that you are responsible for, and uh, if you're if you're a manager of coders, then coders generally are to, 
more often than not, more introverted people. So trying to get them out of their shell and trying to get them to interact socially using Zoom or Skype or tools like that um, can be more difficult. And that's something that a manager really has to pay extra attention to and put extra effort into. Uh, it's, it's something that's really, really easy. I've seen it time and time again between teams where the, uh, it all starts with good intentions um, and the, the communication levels just drop off over weeks. And again, it's one of the things that are really gradual, people don't notice. Uh, and then when someone flags it up, um, half the team will go, nah, it's fine. That's fine, I'm happy with this level of comms. Um, and there'll be the other half who, who is really start, as soon as they realize, then it has starts having a bigger effect on them. When it becomes a conscious thing, like, yeah, okay. We used to do all this, you know, have these have these chats in the office, and uh, you know, the water cooler moment or the coffee machine, quick five minute chat and that, you know, you break a bit of tension, um, but that doesn't happen anymore. So, um, and, and as a, not as the manager, uh, you probably wouldn't know how, how to maybe rekindle that. Um, but then again, as, as it's the manager's res sort of responsibility really um, to recognize that the, the, the team has gone in that direction and maybe need to put some more effort into rekindling that, that informal communication as well, as opposed to just what people say in meetings. I think that's what surprised me most about the manager's book because I thought the manager's book was going to be about how to have a more productive team and by and large really when you put everything together that is the end result is you end up with a with a more yeah. productive team and, and, and a much better workforce that cr creates better value for the employer or the client. But what I got from it was just how much you care about your team as a manager and and how important it is for a manager to notice the signs when one of the team remotely is having issues and you, signs that you know if you were in the workplace you'd pick up pretty quickly because you can see if someone's Indeed. a bit moody or a bit quiet or something it's not quite as easy to pick that up and you you go quite deeply into into making sure mental health of the team is is looked after and very important and i th that was that was a real revelation for me. I mean, it does, you know, get back to productivity, you know, when all said and done. That's it. But it was just about the amount you cared for the people that you were responsible for. And I, I thought yeah. that was really nice the way that came across. Thanks. Yeah, so, at the end of the day, you're working with people. Uh, we're not, you're not got, you don't have a team of machines that are just churning code out or churning documents out or presentations or whatever the business, the line of business that you may be in is it, they're, they're people um, and we people are social animals and to, to be put in a place where you're, you're for large parts of the day I'm, me I'm, I'm alone for six hours a day got the kid drop the kids off at school go pick them up I've got the day to myself a couple of hours at the end of the day where I have to put it right with their rubble that's where these headphones come in great uh, <laughs> just pushes them about four four meters away um, four meters further away than they actually are so that really helps a lot um, but yeah they're, they're people and you have to look after the needs of the person as well as you know the equipment and the surroundings and all those things that enable them to work but if they're not in a place mentally where they can work then all the equipment's irrelevant um, you can spend all you want on motorized desks and fancy keyboards uh, and big monitors but it's not going to help them churn any work out if, if they literally their head's not in it. So yeah, it, the the looking after the mental space and you know in 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 Western cultures, mental health is largely a taboo issue as well. So I know there's been a lot of effort um, in social media and the like to bring mental health issues to the fore, um, but still it's it's something especially in larger businesses that's generally swept under the carpet and I think it's to the detriment of those companies who don't actually take it as a serious issue um, and a serious part of the well-being of their staff. It'll just lead to, to lack of productivity and 
ultimately yeah the, the business yeah. will fail because you're only as good as the people you've got representing so people are the, the the primary resource of any business it's the people not the software or the hardware that you have it's the people mm -hmm. yeah and did you set out to write three books or did this just get out of control <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I think the plan was two so uh, okay. as a, a coder um, yeah. the coder was natural um, and having gone through the burnout um, and that the, the, a few months ago uh, the isolation phase really kicked in and I thought okay right I, I've come out of it twice now come out the other side of it twice uh, two different sort of angles of the same issue so yeah that became a natural one to almost make it as uh, documentation of my own learnings yeah um, and then uh, I've had some earlier on in my career I have uh, led some teams uh, for large projects so I thought Let's let's do it from that angle as well, um, and create the th uh, create the manager's book. So was is it is it fair to say that the first two were maybe books that you thought were were kind of business books, and then you thought, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> the way the world is, everybody can get something out of this now. That's it. Yeah, like I say, it's, uh, like I said in the last chat, um, it was when everyone got locked down in March 2020 mm. um, and got sent home. Basically, uh, there were a good number of members of my team that I'm working with right now who uh, weren't set up hardware, software-wise, um, and weren't set up mentally to have large swathes of time, large stretches of time uh, at home. Uh, you know, people were working on the sofa, for instance, to start with. A week later, they're complaining of bad backs. <laughs> Who'd have thought it, right? <laughs> get yourself a decent check. Just go work at the dining table, if you, you know, that kind of thing get the company to get you a proper chair and a desk. Small one, doesn't have to be anything massive or major. Um, and all these things sort of came out as people were having these informal chats. We were still in the sort of office banter kind of mode. Um, so we were still having uh, informal chats in little groups or bigger groups on, in more public online chats. We were having the occasional video call. Uh, and these little things just came out and all these tips started coming out. and that's that's where uh, the idea to compile all of that all this information uh, and publish it came out and that's what led me on this journey so it's three books why did you decide to go down the audiobook route uh, it's uh, again it was one of the guys in my team saying I just like to have I just listen to podcasts in the background as I'm working. Um, and uh, I've just got into audiobooks as well. Um, it, it wasn't anything I, I particularly thought about doing. Um, but I thought, why not? Why not? Um, give it give it a shot, see what happens. Um, the audiobooks are doing just as well as the, the e-books and the print they books. Are. So they are? Go they are good? good? Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they were a joy e to read because they were written so so simply there aren't a lot of long words in there there aren't a lot of long sentences it's and and that means it's easier to listen to too because it, it comes at you and okay. uh, but for me to read it and i learned a lot and it was amazing because i was going through the same journey as all the techniques and i was making the mistakes that were in the book and telling people not to make those mistakes <laughs> But, you know, it really did help me. It, they, they're basically the three books I should have been reading or listening to. And it turned out that I was. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was it was it was really good. And did you had you done anything like audio book production before? Never, never. And how did you find the no. process? Because, you know, it's still reasonably new to me. I started in in May and we did the books in what was it? June, July ish. Yeah, it was. Yeah, about July, uh, maybe August for the other, the, the last. The yeah, I've done 28 yeah. books now since May. Wow. So I'm kind of in the swing <laughs> of things now. Yeah. But uh, yours was probably one of the first, or the first one was probably one of the first 10. And how did you find the, the, the process? Because there might be some people watching this who, who have written a book and are thinking, I'd like to make it into an audio book, but is it a drama and 
finding a narrator and is it a nightmare and how long does it take and all that do, do you want to quickly talk about I, that for anyone yeah, right. yeah. um having having done gone through the book writing process and how much effort and that's where the real work uh, is by the way yeah <laughs> not yeah, reading it out loud the manuscript, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but actually working with you it, it was done within days i was a, I couldn't listen to the work you'd made quick enough before you had another drop. <laughs> yeah, I do it because I do it. Uh, some people do like the whole book, but I don't like to do that. I like to do it in stages so that the author can listen to it and then give me feedback yeah. and make any changes or mispronunciations or anything, you know, that yeah, ne that sense. needs changing. And I like to, when I'm doing it, I, I get into it. Because when I, when I send you like a couple of chapters or whatever it turns out to be for you to check, I'm then working on another book for somebody else while you're doing that. And I don't want to get too far away from your one to come back to it. And I don't like it to be weeks because I want to stay fresh and, you know, yeah. So, uh, First, like me with a uh, bouncing between multiple projects, you're just doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It just makes sense to me. And, uh, and I get, I actually get more done if I do it in chunks because if I do tend to do longer things, I, I can get a bit, bogged down and it just keeps things fresh for me and, yeah. and but if you it's get if you get too far away from them and it takes too i once i get onto it i like to get a book done but but yeah. i do it you know in, in stages oh, i'm glad that was a, a process that you that you like because i'm always looking for feedback on better ways to do it is there any is there any any way you, any feedback you've got for me on a better way to do things or something I mean, you thought yeah. i wonder why they don't do this when they're doing it um, as we were going through, I had a couple of notes for you um, in terms of the, just the tone in recording, and you made those changes straight away. You liked me to be further off the mic than all the other authors I work with. You right. like a lot of the other authors like me a lot more, a lot closer because I do a lot of fiction yeah. and sci-fi and romance and stuff, and so I yeah. think I think they like well, I that. that but, but, booming. Yeah. Yeah, the, when you get, you get a thing context. when you get close yeah. to a mic it's called proximity mm. effect and it gets a bit more intimate but your books weren't like that yours were about it was self-help really and so yeah. you wanted somebody to be a bit further so we did we had discussions about that and we'd go back and i'd re-record it and you'd go yeah that's it now that's that's okay that's fine yeah so uh that's kind of like the decision between uh, so when uh, producing a print book you have the choice between cream paper and white paper <laughs> To base it on uh, the, the cream paper is more for your fiction books or your softly reading, even though I've chosen cream paper for mine and the white is generally for more factual because it's supposed to be more authoritative. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. So, so further off the mic yeah. is just just slightly more formal, which is the way yeah, the way you I like thought, it. Yeah. 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 But they are they are terrific books. Uh, why is your business called Nearly Done? <laughs> that's um, that, that's um, as an old moniker that's sort of lasted the test of time. It always gets a laugh, a full one, and it's all. It's, what I like to say is, it's what I never want to say to my clients. I see. That I see. My work is nearly done. Right. Where's this task? It's nearly done. I never want to say that to them. Yes, exactly. Now, yeah, good, good tip. So, what's next? You got anything else planned? Uh, I'm taking a break for a short while, um, get through Christmas, yeah. just relax over there, and then yeah. we'll see what the new year brings, I think. Yeah, yeah. well, they're, they're really good, and they couldn't be more timely. The three books, get all three, if you get a chance to get all three, because there's, a, there's different things in each one. The first one is called Effective Remote Working Techniques for Coders. It's not just for coders, but it's effect. The reason why it's coders is because Prem, I'll call, I'll call you Prem now, although you're Harry Singh in the, oh, hello, you've cut out. I don't know what's just happened there. I don't know if you can still, ah, you're back, but you're side, no, there we go. Ah, sorry, <laughs> No worries, mate. Um, yeah, so although the first one is called uh, Effective Remote uh, Working Techniques for Coders, that's because Prem is a coder, and that's where his decade of experience going into this came from. But there is stuff for, for anybody who's working from home, there's stuff in, the, in that first book. By the way, you called yeah, Harry really. Singh is the author's name, which is your granddad's name as a tribute. That is my grandfather, right. yeah. Yeah. So it's effective remote working techniques for coders, nine practical steps to boost your productivity when working wherever. The second one is called effective remote working technique for managers. Now, you don't just have to be a manager. If you deal with anybody remotely and if you're working from home, you will 
there's enough stuff in this for this one to be worth it. And also, the last one brings everything together. And in the environment we're in now, with self-isolation and lockdown and everything, it's called Cabin Fever, How to Stay Sane While Working Remotely. They're the ones you need. Now, uh, if you go into the notes below this in the on YouTube, in the little notes there, there is a link to the page on my website, which is my audiobook page, and you will find all three books there. And if you click on them, you can get them for free if you sign up for a free 30-day trial of Audible. So, and the, right. the link to that is down there. Go down there then get, and and uh, check out all three books that way. And uh, and then on you can. Of that. What's that? Yeah, on top of that. But wait, there's more. There's more. It gets better. <laughs> so uh, the e-books are on um, a special discount for 99p. They are. November. Yeah. Wow. So, because I think it's really important to get this information out there and get it as really exact as accessible as possible. And that's through Amazon, the eBooks, the Kindle. Yes, there, there's a bunch of other stores that uh, it's all published on, but they're, they're um, on Kindle as well. To yeah. get the discount, uh, though, where do you have to go for the discount? Uh, is that on all? Is it right across? Oh, yeah, I've made it everywhere. Yeah. Great. Everywhere okay. Is, yeah. Uh, so, so if you find them key, on, yeah, the all three eBooks for three quid, and you can get the audio book. You know, to have in the car or wherever you want, wherever that goes, you can do that as well. Get those yeah. in the link in the link down below. It'll take you to a link to the web, the the page on my website, which is about audiobooks, and you'll see all three books in there. Um, Harry Singh. There's also another store. What, what's this? You can buy if you uh, if you are a fan of cryptocurrency, you can buy go to nearlydone.press, and you can buy the books there as well. At nearlydone.press. And yeah. you take Bitcoin or whatever that whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, you can pay with Bitcoin. And P R E S S, nearly that's done. Right. Dot press. Brilliant. Right. We've got you sorted out. Working from home, working remotely, whatever it is you need to do, staying sane, stopping getting cabin fever. Three excellent books. Cheers, mate. Brilliant. Nice one. Thanks again, Graham.